Hi, I'm Natalie Lebel, and today I want to share with you how to stop overthinking and become a lifelong positive thinker. Now, we often think about what to do, what not to do, what would be best for us and for everyone around us. But how often do we think about our thinking? So when do we actually stop and question why we overthink, whether it's productive or how to overcome it, and really question what's going on in our little heads. <laughs> so if you find you've got thoughts going around and round and round your head and you're feeling like you're overthinking, well, here are some symptoms that might give you a sign that you could possibly be doing that. So the first one is that you can't sleep. So you're trying to get to sleep and when you try, you just can't turn your mind off. And you begin to feel like you're agitated by worries or doubts. Oftentimes when this happens, you start to self-medicate, um, which then can become a vicious cycle as well. Now studies on an overthinking disorder suggest that you might turn to drugs or alcohol or food or any other external way of regulating your emotions. Now this is because you don't feel able to calm down using external resources. So you're always tired. Now this may be from insomnia or just the constant loop of agitated thoughts going round and round and round your head. Now this could come because you want to control everything or you want to try to plan every aspect of your life down to the last minute detail. Now this is the only way that you feel safe, but it never quite works because it is impossible to control everything. Another sign is that you obsess about failure. You tend to be perfectionist and often imagine how awful it would be to fail in any way. Now this fear of failure often will paralyze you and prevent you from learning from any of your mistakes. Another symptom is that you fear the future. So instead of being excited by all that you've accomplished and all the things that you've experienced, you are trapped in your own anxiety about what could go wrong. Now you don't trust yourself or your own judgment and you second guess yourself on everything from what you're wearing to where you're going and what you're gonna be saying and how you come across to others. You can see how they can be going round and round your head. Now this puts you in a position where you're really relying on others to reassure you that your judgment is sound. So this is not a great thing to get into because we really need to be self-reliant here. So that's another symptom. Another one is that you get tension headaches. Now these feel like a tight band around your temples and you might notice a pain or stiffness in your neck as well. Now chronic tension headaches are a sign that you desperately need a rest. Okay, so now that we know what the symptoms are and what it looks like, how do you overcome it? So let me give you some tips on that. So first of all, remember that overthinking does not lead to insight. Okay, you want an understanding of which decision will be best. And so for this, you need a level of insight into what each decision will lead to. Thinking this through, however, is not that productive or overthinking it through because you never know what something will be like unless you actually experience it. So yes, I agree. You should get your thoughts out, write things down on paper, have a look at them, and then don't overthink it, but sit in a space of quietness where you can allow some insight to come through from a source outside of you. That's gonna really help you make that decision. Because when you're consciously in the problem, all you're doing is focusing on the problem and creating more of the problem. <laughs> okay, also what you wanna do is keep active throughout the day and tire your body out. So do you wanna know one of the main reasons that you overthink? It's because you have the time to. Not one day can be fruitful if more time than necessary is allowed for aimless thinking. So our mind rests well at night, knowing that its day has already been directed towards worthy goals. This is why it's so important that you set out your day the night before, look at your list, look at your plans for the next day, um, so that when you go to sleep, it's not your conscious mind that's overthinking everything, but your subconscious mind is sorting out all the challenges and it's able to give you the answers that you need in the morning. So consider daily exercise, any kind of physical activity that raises your heart rate and improves your health. Walking is exercise. Sports, Pilates, playing with the dog are too, or playing with the kids. It doesn't have to be training for the next Olympics. Just get moving and get tired. Now number two is to develop the skill of forgiveness. So it's no surprise that having the misfortune of being treated undesirably leads to people to suppress and repress anger towards other people. Now forgiveness is the highest of human virtues, not only because it's morally correct, spiritually mature, or deemed a commendable personality trait, it's because it single-handedly can induce the ultimate peace in people. 
Forgiveness has also been shown on many occasions to help develop positive self-esteem, improve your mood, and dramatically improve your health. So it's a predictor of relationship well-being and marital length, and it has even been shown to increase longevity. So make sure that you, if you have holding any grudges, any resentment, that you get into a place where you can forgive. Now, forgiveness doesn't have to involve two people, it can just involve one. You can write a letter, you can write an email, you don't have to send it, but really get to that point where you can get to a place of forgiveness and then release that, that, that past things from your, from your active future. Okay, so number three, get active. Retrain your brain to think positively. Okay, so learning how to stop overthinking, anxiety and restlessness also has a lot to do with building better connections with your physical body. So both physical and mental forms of positive stimulation help to rewrite problematic negative thought processes. So for example, exercise can work wonders for the overthinker. Find something that you genuinely love to do, whether it's a team sport or running in a beautiful place or cycling with friends or swimming laps, whatever works for you. Engage your brain with learning something new. So pick up a new language. Try something creative that you've never attempted before. Uh, figure out how to play a new problem solving game like chess or Sudoku or, or Scrabble. You know, or take up some kind of crafting. Now you can practice meditation for overthinking as well. Simple 10 minute body scanning exercises work really well here. So breathe deeply for a few minutes and then consider the sensations in each part of your body, working from your head all the way down to your toes. And notice if there's any tension and if there is, release it. Alternatively, deep breathing also works amazing on its own. So breathe in through the nose for a few seconds, hold it for a couple of seconds, and then out through the mouth. Now this pattern is proven to be the most relaxing of all. And the reason for that is because you are taking oxygen into the body, reviving all of your cells, and then exhaling out through the mouth. So what it's really doing is helping to revive the body as well. Okay, so number four, be patient and live in the now. Cool. Okay, so learning how to stop overthinking and worrying also involves cultivating ways of better living in the present moment. So first, don't allow yourself to be held hostage by fears about what might happen to you. Instead, confront yourself with the toughest question. What's the worst that could happen? Often, it won't be as bad as what you really think. Now, in addition, you'll typically discover that you actually have the resources to deal with the worst case scenarios. So finally, work to accept that you cannot control everything. This is the purpose of your overthinking and it is ultimately holding you back from success. So to grow and develop as a person, you need to willingly move out of your comfort zone into places where the unexpected can happen. Now you also need to be able to learn from the mistakes that you've made and see them as opportunities for improvement and for growing rather than failures. Now believe me, all of the delicious, amazing, most beautiful things in life happen in the unknown. And the more that we can surrender and be comfortable with whatever the universe is gonna throw our way, the more delightful our life becomes. Now, before I go, I'd like to know, do you have any tips on how to become a more positive person? If you do, please share them in the comment box below. My name is Natalie Ledwell and stay tuned for a new release every Thursday and Saturday. So thanks for watching and bye for now.